In this video, I want to take a look at finding the derivatives of inverse trig functions. And um, hopefully you've already reviewed, uh, viewed a video um, on reviewing where the inverse trig functions come from. Um, our task in calculus is to find the derivatives of those functions. So I want to take a look uh, just a little bit at where those derivatives come from. Um, not necessarily going to hold you responsible for deriving them, uh, more for memorizing them, but I, I do want you to see where these derivatives come from. So if you take a look at the um, two relations that I have on the board, sine of y is equal to x and the cosine of y is equal to x. So notice we have an implicit relationship here. We have switched the x and the y. So instead of this being a, a normal sine function, it is the inverse sine function because again, we've switched x and y. And we want to find the derivative of this function. So the first thing that I've done here is I've gone back to good old fashioned Sakatoa and I took the information that I have in my uh, problem, the sine of y is equal to x. Now remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Let me grab a pen here. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then my angle, I'm taking the sine of angle y, so there's my, in my right triangle, there's my angle y. This is x over 1, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So x is the opposite side, and 1 is the hypotenuse. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, um, I find the adjacent side, which is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is what 1 minus x squared to the 1 half is equal to. Okay, so again, I found that third side using the Pythagorean theorem. All right, likewise, I came over to the... Um, cosine relationship, and this is inverse cosine because, again, the x and y have switched places, and I did the same thing. I set up a triangle. y is my angle, so there is the angle in the triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so in this case, I will have the adjacent side of x. The hypotenuse is 1, and by the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I got the third side, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I set up my triangle. All right, so now we want to find the derivative. We know that we have sine of y equal to x. We want to find the derivative, but we want to find the derivative in terms of x. Now this is going to require some implicit differentiation. So let me uh, move this box out of the way and take a look at my work here. From the triangle that I have above, sine of y is equal to x. So the first thing I'm doing is taking the derivative of both sides. The derivative of sine is cosine of y dy dx. And I did that by implicit differentiation. On the right-hand side, the derivative of x is equal to 1. So in the first step, all I did was took the derivative of both sides, because that's my goal, to find the derivative of sine of y equal to x, which again is inverse sine, because I switched the x and the y. Solving for dy dx, I'm going to divide both sides by 1 over cosine, which is what I did right here. Now, if you'll take a look up at my triangle, I know that the cosine of y from this triangle, I'm looking at this triangle, oh, this pen switching back and forth, it's getting me here. From this triangle here, this is what I was working from in this particular triangle. If I want the cosine, remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, I'll take the adjacent side, which is, um, is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. This is 1 over the cosine of y. So cosine of y using this triangle is adjacent the square root of 1 minus x squared over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So I'm going to replace cosine of y with that substitution. And that's where I get the derivative of inverse sine to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. 
therefore, since this was inverse sine, and remember inverse sine is denoted as arc sine, the derivative of arc sine is, the, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And all of that was, again, based on working with this triangle right here. Now, there may be some of you who are wondering, this triangle right here, this triangle right here. There may be some of you wondering why when we got to the cosine of y down at this step here that we didn't go over to the other triangle. Remember, this problem was based on the fact that we had the sine of y equal to x, which was in this triangle over here. The second triangle, the second problem would be used if we wanted to find or to find the derivative of arc cosine. So we were working with that first triangle the whole time. Now, if we know that the derivative of arc sine of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, well, easily we can transfer the derivative of arc sine of u. By the chain rule, we know we'll still get 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared times the derivative of u, which is du. A lot of times this will be written as du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So that's the derivative of arc sine if, the, uh, if we have anything other than plain x. All right, let's take a look at what's next. Now, we could go through and create triangles for all six of the inverse trig functions doing the same process that I just showed you for arc sine. We're not going to do that. Um, you can, you can uh, view those in your book, or you could probably find another video on YouTube that would do all six of them. But it would be the same thing, setting up the triangles, finding the derivatives. Uh, bottom line at this point for you is you have six... Uh, inverse trig der derivatives that you need to memorize. And I want you to see the patterns here that make it easy for you to memorize. We already know that the derivative of the arc sine of u is du, or u prime, over the square root of 1 minus u squared. We just derived that one on the other side. We'll take a look at the derivative of arc cosine. Notice it is a co Since it is a co, it only makes sense that its derivative will be negative. So it's the same derivative as arc sine, except for, since it's a co, the derivative is negative. All right, same patterns occur. The derivative of arc tangent is u prime, or du, over 1 plus u squared. Our, the derivative of arc cotangent is the opposite of that, so it's a co, so its derivative will be negative. Um, I will tell you that arctangent is the most prevalent, um, the most prevalent inverse trig derivative that you see. Uh, it occurs on a lot of AP tests. Um, the second most prevalent are arc sine and arc cosine. And honestly, you really don't see a lot of arc secant and arc cosecant, at least on the uh, AP test. But the derivative of arc secant and arc cosecant, one is positive, arc secant is positive, arc cosecant is negative. Um, notice they have the same derivative except for one is positive and one is negative. All right, let's look at a few examples. Um, we're to find the derivative in each of these problems. So we're going to use our formulas from above if we want to find the derivative of arc cosine. Well, the derivative of y, let me grab my pen here. The derivative of y is dy dx. From above, we know that the derivative of arc cosine, first of all, we have to find u prime, or du, the derivative of 2x minus 3 is 2, over the square root of 1 minus u, which in this case is 2x minus 3, quantity squared. And you can leave it like that. Uh, cleaning it up is not going to do a whole lot to make that much better. But in this case, u is equal to 2x minus 3. All right, in problem number 2, uh, this time we have a coefficient of 3, so it is not the product rule. 3 only serves as a coefficient, so when we find the derivative, we get on the left-hand side, the derivative of y is dy dx. On the right-hand side, 3 is a coefficient. It gets multiplied by u prime, or du. Again, u is equal to 2x minus 3. 
the derivative of 2x minus 3 is 2, so there's my u prime or my du, over, and it's also a cosine, you know what, I missed that in the first problem, if cosine, it's negative, um, square root of 1 minus u squared, so I have 2x minus 3 quantity squared, uh, cleaning up the numerator just gives me negative 6 over the square root of 1 minus 2x minus 3 quantity squared. Uh, problem number 3. Now we do have the product rule because we have a, um, a function of 3x and we have the function arc cosine 2x minus 3. On the left hand side the derivative of y is dy dx. When I do the product rule, I'll have the first function, which is 3x, times the derivative of the second function, arc cosine. Since it's cosine, it's going to have a negative. It's going to be negative. In this case, again, u is equal to 2x minus 3, and the derivative of 2x minus 3 is 2 in the numerator, over the square root of 1 minus u squared. That was the first times the derivative of the second plus the second function, which is arc cosine of the angle, multiplied by the derivative of the first. The derivative of 3x is just 3. And as far as cleaning that up is concerned, the only thing I would do is multiply the 3x times negative 2 and have negative 6x in my numerator. Um, and I would keep the second term exactly as it is. All right, let me uh, do maybe one or two more, and then I'll leave you on your own. Uh, y equal arc sine, so now we're back to arc sine, so we know the derivative is going to be positive. The derivative of y is dy dx. u in this case is equal to 2 minus 5x. The derivative of u is negative 5, so there's my u prime or my du over the square root of 1 minus u, 2 minus 5x, squared. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, there are more examples on the other page. Um, let's jump down, let's see. Number 5 is not product rule. 4 is a coefficient. Mostly what you're doing here is just practicing these so that you uh, memorize the formulas and you need to go ahead and do all of these even though I'm not doing them. Number six is product rule because we have two functions. We have 4x squared and we have arc sine. Let's jump down to number 11 uh, just because that gives us um, a different function to work with. Uh, number 11, we have two choices here. We can do the quotient rule or we can bring the x to the numerator, make it x to the negative one and do the product rule. Um, let's do that. Let's rewrite this as x to the negative 1 times arc tangent of x. It would not be wrong to do it as the quotient rule. No, I'm just going to do the product. The derivative of the left side is dy dx. I chose to make this a product, so I'll have the first function, x to the negative 1, times the derivative of the second. In this case, since I just have a plain x, the derivative of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is the derivative of arc tangent, plus the second function, which is arc tangent of x, times the derivative of the first, which would be negative x to the negative 2. Cleaning that up a little bit, I can move this x to the denominator. That would be 1 over x times 1 plus x squared. Uh, moving the negative in front would give me negative arc tangent of x over x squared. And certainly I could go ahead and distribute this x in here, make this x times x cubed. All right, let's look at one more question. Let's see, we've done arc tan, we've done arc cosine. Let's do, um, let's do number 14. In number 14, we have the arc tangent again, and on the left-hand side, the derivative of y is dy dx. On the right-hand side, now this time, this is our u. u is equal to 3 raised to the 2x power. This is an exponential function. So remember, 
u prime will be the function times the ln of the base times the derivative of the power over 1 plus u squared. So we have 3 to the 2x squared. And when we have a power to a power, we multiply the power, so we get 3 to the 4x power. Please do not try to multiply anything together in the numerator. Especially, don't take this 2 and multiply it by this 3, because the 3 has a power on it. That is the final answer. So, mainly, you've just got to sit down and memorize your inverse trig derivatives, remembering that all of the cos are negative. Um, and you have some practice to do. Uh, you need to finish these problems up on this page. Uh, in addition to that, you have an assignment, which is somewhere on this paper, or on the flip chart, or maybe it's not. But your substitute or your teacher will give you the assignment. So I hope that you find this video helpful.